Good morning. We welcome all who are gathered here for worship at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish. May all who walk through our door know that God loves them. Recognizing the presence of the risen Christ among us, please take a moment now to welcome those seated around you. You have entered the house of God. Out of respect, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Our celebrant for this liturgy is Father Bob Norton, assisted by Deacon Gary Comer. Today, we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Love one another, Jesus tells his disciples. No, Jesus commands his disciples, love one another. As we gather here today, we ask ourselves if we can be recognized by our love. As the people of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish, may God bless us in the challenge to truly love each other. Our gathering to be found in the blue gather hymnal at number 598. O oh God, beyond all praising, is number 598 in gather.
name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So I'd like to thank all of you who have come to uh, help me celebrate my 50 years of priesthood. And for those of you who are surprised, I welcome you and thank you also uh, for coming here to celebrate with me. When you're a priest 50 years, you need a little more help. And uh, I left uh, Bill, Deacon Bill's name was uh, left out of the announcement, so I just wanted to let you know that he's here, if you can't see him. <laughs> and of course, all of you uh, remember him in his time of, that he spent in ministry here at St. Athanasius. So let us all acknowledge our sinfulness and ask the Lord's forgiveness that we might worthily celebrate these mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplishing the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Attilia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. from dark 
darkness and death God will not leave us to starve Rain down, rain down Rain down your love on your people Rain down, rain down Rain down your love, God of life God of creation, we long for your truth You are the water of life that we thirst Grant that your love and your peace touch our hearts All of our hope lies in you A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, 
I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. As I was uh, walking up the aisle uh, this morning and kind of looking around, I saw so many faces that uh, I knew and remembered, and a lot of them, uh, some of them, uh, go back even uh, 50 years. That would be mostly my family. So I thought I would start out with a, a story about my family. I have a cousin who's in the second pew with a mask, and actually, he, do he doesn't. Uh, doesn't look very good. Are you feeling okay? <laughs> yeah? Okay. Um, his name is Dan. And he was lucky or unlucky, uh, however you want to say it, to be born on Christmas Day. And this one Christmas very long ago which was our tradition. We gathered at one house, the biggest house, and had our Christmas dinner as a, a family. And of course, at that time, I had cousins who were very little. And uh, I, I had one cousin who was uh, telling me what this was all about, that this was all about Danny's birthday. And I said, oh. I said, well, that's good to know. I said, well, who else's um, birthday was it? And I've told this many times before, so you may have heard it. And uh, my cousin Aaron said, it's Jesus' birthday. And I said, oh, that's, yes, that's good. It is Jesus' birthday. And I said, what happened to Jesus? Well, then she told me the Christmas story of Bethlehem and the wise men and all that. And then I said, well, what happened uh, after all of that? And she paused and thought a little bit, and she said, his mother shot him and beat him and put him on a cross. And I thought, oh. I thought it, do you remember that? Well, it's true. It's, I didn't make it up. Um, so immediately I knew that I had to be a priest for this family <laughs> to educate them a little bit more in the finer uh, aspects of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the reason I tell you that story is because coming up the aisle and recognizing so many faces, I also realized that with each of those faces that I recognize, there is also a story that goes with it. Hopefully, and I trust many of them were happy stories, but there were also those periods of time which in the life of anybody, and then certainly in the life of a priest, there are sad stories also. And it took me back to thinking about uh, what our Holy Father, Pope Francis, often talks about, and that is accompaniment. He talks about accompanying people through life. And it's not just a matter of uh, can I accompany you to the dollar store? It's a matter of being really involved in those lives, deeply involved spiritually, intellectually, emotionally, knowing all these people and knowing their stories and, be, and being able to integrate them into the life of the church, into the life of Jesus Christ. Because all of us know we have only one priest, and that priest is Jesus Christ. But all of us know also that in that priesthood of Jesus Christ, all of us share, either in one way or another, in whatever that might be, but we're all called to be part of the priesthood of Jesus Christ. And therefore, if we go on logically with that, we're also required to know those stories and share those stories. And hence, we come to the gospel today knowing a story and sharing that story and doing what Jesus said, I'm giving you a new commandment. New commandment? I've heard that commandment many times. But Jesus in his wisdom and in his knowledge of human nature and his love of each of, all, of us knows that that story is continually new. I give you a new commandment, love one another. I give you a new commandment, learn one another's stories. I give you a new commandment, accompany one another. 
throughout life in that deep sense of spiritually and intellectually and emotionally. Walk with each other, share joys, share burdens, share whatever can be, be, be shared among any of us, that our stories may all meld into one and they come to the point where all of us are on that journey to the Lord Jesus Christ, on that journey to be one with one another and with Jesus in the body of Christ. That's what we celebrate in the great Easter mystery after the resurrection. And that's why it's so important for us to hear those words of Jesus today. Once again, I give you a new commandment. Let it be renewed in you. Love one another. Now there's two parts to that commandment, you know. And the second part is the part that sometimes we forget, sometimes we leave out, and sometimes we just rather would not bother with it. The second part of that is, as I have loved you. And that means there may be some difficulty there. We maybe, maybe have some difficulty accompanying somebody because maybe they're getting on our nerves or maybe they don't look like us, or maybe they don't talk like us, or maybe they don't feel like us, or maybe we're just tired of their story being repeated, repeated over and over again. And sometimes on the surface, not making any sense, but if we really accompany the person as the Holy Father describes accompaniment, we find that there's a deeper meaning in what's going on there. There may be a problem. There may be something that we need to listen to with a deeper respect, with a deeper knowledge, with a deeper love of each other. And that sense of loving one another as Jesus speaks to us is not about an, a, a kind of romantic type of love. That love that he ta is talking about to us is, is knowing one another's story. So today, as I come to this altar once again, and uh, since I retired, I go to many altars. But you know, I'm never as comfortable at them as I am here, and because I know many stories. You have shared mine, and I have shared you with, with our story, my story with, throughout the years. And as it comes today, 50 years, 30, I would be, would be here 30 years, but I left at 27. I want us to understand what it means for us to love one another and to do as Jesus asked us to do. It's not always easy. Many times it's hard. But if we want to be together, if we want to really share the joy of the Lord, as the prayers of Easter always talk to us, we should be exalting in Paschal joy. I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure I've ever done that. But I try to be joyful in the Lord most of the time. And when I'm not, that's when you guys pick me up. So we're just not talking about my priesthood, but we're talking about the priesthood of Jesus Christ, the priesthood of all of us as we work together, as we accompany one another, as we make our journey, as we fall in, in those uh, potholes along the road of life, but that we recover. We recover from that by the help of one another so that we can go forward in Jesus' name. One other thing the gospel tells us today is that the the world will recognize us by that love we have for one another. And sometimes I feel that as Catholics, uh, we're recognized more for not loving people, for excluding people, or condemning people, for whatever reason it might be. But that's certainly not the story of Jesus Christ. And that certainly can't be our story. We must support one another and be with one another and accept one another's stories. Not always saying, of course, that they, they're right because all of us are sinners and all of us do commit wrong. But that doesn't mean we can't love each other and that doesn't mean that we can't hear one another's stories. So, so today we hear the new commandment once again, love one another. And we hear that second part, as I have loved you. We do our best to listen, to accompany, to be with, to understand, and to help and assist all of our brothers and sisters in the name of the Lord Jesus, that they were all in the same boat and we all do it together as we share the one priesthood of Jesus Christ.
I believe in one God, Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, who all in the two worlds. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, substantial with the Father. Through him all things are made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of Virgin Mary, being man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Now I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. We give voice to our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers, confident in the one who makes all things new. Our response is, risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the church that we manifest the selfless love of Christ in the way we treat one another, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that all nations may put aside their differences and disagreements and work toward creating a new earth without war or violence, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those who grow the food that we eat, that they may be blessed with good weather and favorable conditions as they nurture the budding life in their care, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are graduating this spring, May God bless them as they celebrate their achievements and prepare for new challenges ahead. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for Father Bob Norton celebrating his 50th anniversary, who has inspired us all for his devotion to his faith, for his example, for his dedication to his vocation, for his servant leadership, for his pastoral care, and for the importance of community, we pray to the Lord. For children baptized into the faith, especially Josie Ann Basisi, Blaise Charles Dippold, Landon Vincent Egerder, Brooklyn Renee Senko, Bennett Vil William Varancevic, and Damien Dylan DeFrancesco, May they know of God's love for them as they grow in wisdom, age, and grace. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Mary Ann Fleckenstein and Carol Hardy, may they be welcomed into the eternal presence of our loving God. And for the intention of this Mass, the people of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, your Son modeled a selfless love to his disciples and calls us all to love one another in turn. Listen to the prayers of those whom you love, of those who love you, and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second collection today is for the American Bishops' Appeal benefiting Eastern Europe and Latin America.
and let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he thought he, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, he showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to those sorrowful in heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and re restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent his Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an everlasting covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, and while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake in this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body of the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise and glory of your name. Therefore, O God, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice especially your servant Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, his auxiliaries William, William, Mark, the whole order of bishops, clergy, religious, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the blessed apostles, and all the saints in your kingdom. There, with hold of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, Lee. Peace Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Peace, Bill.
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Jack. Peace, Matt. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Bread, Breaking Bread books, number 560, excuse me, number 561, 10,000 Reasons Bless the Lord, number 561 in Breaking Bread. Should I purify? Uh, sure. Let us pray. 
graciously be pres present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements. Due to requests from parishioners, the chapel at St. Teresa of Avila Church will return to masking beginning next weekend. Wearing a mask in the St. Teresa Chapel area will be strongly encouraged for all adults. We appreciate your cooperation. Our music ministry is hosting a food truck festival this Sunday afternoon from noon to four at St. Teresa of Avila campus. There will be 24 food trucks, including several craft breweries, live music, homemade baked goods, and lots of activities planned with indoor and outdoor seating. Please bring your families and friends and join us for fun this afternoon. And lastly, uh, following Mass today, we have a celebration. Our celebration continues downstairs with a reception for Father Bob. So before we leave, I just want to uh, give thanks to uh, Ted and the choir for the wonderful uh, music that they provided this morning. Uh, I was allowed to choose one hymn, so that was uh, good. Uh, he didn't really limit me, I just said that. But uh, they always do a great job, so we thank them. And uh, when I, in my youth, there were, it was a TV show with a romper room, and this lady, the teacher, Miss Janie, had a magic mirror, and uh, she would you know, spin this around. She'd be able to see people who weren't here. Now, I'm, I'm told this is being televised by CNN, so uh, <laughs> Juanita is working for them. But I know there are people watching, uh, or will watch, but I just wanted to recognize one, and that is somebody who Many, most parishioners will know, and that is Bob Toya, who was an usher here for uh, 50 years at least, and uh, is going to be 100 in October. He really wanted to be here today, but of course, he couldn't. So I uh, <laughs> wanted to say uh, hello to Bob. Want to say anything else? Oh, and one other thing I wanted to say. I'm especially glad that Father Leroy was able to come and celebrate with me because uh, I ask him for two reasons. Uh, one is uh, we've been uh, very uh, good friends and supportive of one another, listening to one another's stories for the last 30 years. But also when he had his 50th uh, was the uh, pandemic and he couldn't celebrate with mass. So we had a drive through the parking lot. I think there were three cars that came or, or maybe it was 300, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but there were a lot of cars that came, and you know, it was a uh, honk if you love Leroy. But I just wanted him to, uh, I just wanted to share my 50 years of uh, joy uh, with him today. So that's uh, so, uh, 52? 52 years for him. Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Sorry. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he who, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, be living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And in thanksgiving for Father Thank you. We go forth singing from the Red Breaking Bread Hymnal number 175. Jesus is risen, number 175 in Breaking Bread. This i
Jesus is risen, let us sing praise to the everlasting King. Alleluia, alleluia. Most holy day of days, let us together sing his praise. Alleluia, alleluia. Raise joyful voices to the sky, sing of the heavens in great cry. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Hallelujah. Oh, God the Father, let us sing to God the Son, our risen King. 